Hello, everyone, and welcome back to more BTS Americas presented by Squarespace, Face of Bro League, G2A.com, and of course, Alpha Draft. And I don't know what the hell was up with that janky little intro, but we have made it into action and actually on time. This is unbelievable. I am Cobble Guy, of course, and I'm going to be joined by the one and only American True Classic Pony Boy, Mott Dota. Mott, how you doing, my brother? Uh, I'm staying golden as we jump into this game, Dakota. It is Frost Snake Abusers, which is headed up by Loomdon, uh, mm -hmm. a veteran of the NA Dota scene, of course, a regular stream viewer of yours, I know. Also, just a generally good guy versus people we know pretty pretty well. Team Archon Dota 2, mm -hmm. formerly North American Rejects and RV, whatever you want to call them. They were picked up by Archon Five recently. Interesting to note about Team Archon Dota 2, this is their first official since the TI5 qualifiers when they went down to complexity in that long-winded series. Very excited for this matchup, Dakota. Obviously, Frost Snake Abusers are the vast underdogs. You're yes. going up against a probably TI team. And then, of course, Archon Dota 2. We'll see how they uh, they play in this best of three series. Yeah, I'm very I'm very excited. You know, at their uh, TI5 qualifier run, Team Archon slash NAR, they look damn promising. And then they got a bit scary for them. But they managed to pull out what many considered a bit of an upset. They took down Mouse Sports, or Team Tinker, if you will, headed up by, of course, Black and Bulba and all those guys. And then we had that ridiculous finals. And there was, like, a lot of lags, server problems, remakes. Once they got taken down that one game from complexity and then the issues came out, they just seemed to be on full-blown tilt and couldn't really, couldn't really come back. So hopefully yeah. their heads are strong. They're probably feeling pretty damn confident. They got this new Archon deal, the head up by the Gurg himself. I don't know how we feel about all that. But here, yeah. it's it's on these underdogs, though. The Frost Snake Abusers, as you said. These guys are coming in, you know, not the favorites. They made their way, muscled through that open qualifier. Along the way, they Ten did seconds. take down the Argentinian Rejects 1-0. And then they went against what was left of Five Team Wheel. Beat remaining. them down 2-0. And it wasn't until the finals where they got bested by what is now known as Pain Gaming, you know, 2-0. So they did manage to walk away with a, a free 250 bucks from their open qualifier run, but we want to see now if they can get further. And you got to remember, these this bracket run is a single elimination. You lose your best of three, you're done. You don't get a second chance. So we'll have to see. There could be a crazy upset in the works, but Mott, let's talk about the actual draft. Team Archon are going to open up with your meta. All right, they get their Tusk Queen of Pain, and then a Naga to be picked up here. Not sure yet if this is going to be a position four or an Ush Classic. And then for the Snakes or Frost Snake Abusers, we got Winter Wyvern, Dazzle, Abaddon, and then the Pugna. Yeah, these are two pickups, especially Pugna and Abaddon. I don't think anybody was expecting. This is full-blown team defense. You have Cold Embrace, you have Shallow Grave, you have Aphotic Shield, and you have Decrepify. Just about anything to dodge a spell or stay alive during a team fight, they have it. Their damage is going to come from Nether Blast. Winter's Curse is okay, Splinter Blast and Arctic Burn are okay, but they don't really have much burst other than Pugna and Nether Blast, and maybe even a little bit of Life Drain as well. But it's all defensive capabilities. Now, the question is, who's going to be a support? Who's going to be a core? It looks like we probably will see DK mid. Maybe they do sort of some 2-1-2 kind of dual lane offlane. Pugna probably will be the one. And then maybe the Abaddon farms in the offlane. I'm not exactly sure. Winter, Winter, Winter Wyvern and Dazzle don't necessarily function very well with farm. Abaddon's pretty good. Pugna, obviously, in that one position is something we see very commonly, mm -hmm. at least when he is picked up. Um, going back to your original question about Team Archon Dota 2, they have a Naga Sour, and you're like, all right, well, it's a Naga. What are we going to see here? Seconds. More than likely, it's support. Uh, they have the Tusk for the offlane for more than likely MSS. Five they pick up the Queen of Pain. Maybe. They pick up the Lina, which is also very interesting. They could do Queen of Pain safe lane for, for who are, whether it's Quark exactly. or Ush. Lina mid probably for Ush. And then they pick up another support here to round out their lineup as they have a Naga Siren support. Maybe something like a Lion, something with potential lockdown. Or they can get real greedy, but they already have a Naga Siren. So I think they're going to go for like a Witch Doctor or a Lion or, or something. Or maybe even an AA. Something along those lines here would be pretty good for Team Archon Dota 2. Because you have to imagine with the heals coming out for... for for Frost Snake Abusers, this would be a really great ancient apparition. Oh, it's manned out. All right, yeah. well, just Sorry, kidding. <laughs> they get they someone else who's CM. frosty, though. His dirty little cousin, the Crystal May, and that blonde tramp right here is going to get grabbed up fifth pick. So they get that sweet, delicious mana across the board. A hero who will pop in from time to time can be versatile. Uh, good roam work can add some pressure towards the mid lane if necessary. But they're going to need a lot to break through what looks like one of the most ridiculous defensive setups I've seen in some while here for the Snake How Squad. How supposed to kill anybody? Yeah, I don't I, know. That's just like I don't DK freaking is, know. <laughs> he's a tanky guy. He's got dragon blood. DK is just like, ah, oh, hit me with everything you got. 
And then all his team's behind him and just like, yeah, don't even, don't even try it. It's just not gonna work. So, luckily there is Alina and Laguna Blade is like really good even against all the defensive capabilities they have. It just comes down to Shallow Grave being there. Um, Queen of Pain should do okay. Uh, they don't really have much late game potential though. Like this is very early game centric for Team Archon Dota 2. Unless somehow Chad is able to, I think, transition into a core role, which we very rarely see on four position Naga Sirens right now in the current meta. I fear for the late game for Archon, but I also think that this could go horribly for Snakes. They have like, all right, we're defensive. We're gonna get all this shit done. We're not gonna get killed, but they could absolutely get stomped, especially if their laning setup isn't great. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, no, I, I certainly agree with that. It's gonna be interesting how they deal with that tough defensive shell and if they're gonna be able to just kind of do as they please. Coming to this matchup, of course, the heavy favorites. But let's go ahead and do the roll call here. I'll do the honors of introducing our newer fresh face baby squad here. We got the Frosted Snakes, head up by none other than their captain, Loom Dunn here, who's going to be playing the Winter Wyvern. Just behind him, we got QXKV, going to be playing your Abaddon. Based on his build, I would have to say he's going to be in more of a core position here, in what could be a dual lane setup between him and the Wyvern in the off lane. We got Champ Blue. Well, I'm not, I, I don't know a lot of these, but it could be. Is it? Is he named after that, that anime Samurai Shampoo or whatever? More than likely, yes. I thought at first when I heard that it was Samurai Shampoo. Poo, but I no, was way no, wrong on that. I'm sorry if I insulted you on that one. No, Anyways, right. bottom lane, Futsa is going to be playing your Dazzle. He's a renegade of the NA scene, has been stop, you know, stopping and standing in for occasional teams. And, of course, WWD, the Wild Witch Doctor. Man, I haven't seen this guy in quite a mile, uh, yeah. while. He had a team you know, named after himself that used to have, what, Sna as part of the squad, at, as well as Ush, even, too, I believe. I think Mike was on that squad for a period of time as well. But Mike's been on, like, every freaking Dota team in the face of NA Dota for, yeah. like, ages i don't know a world traveler oh, but uh yeah this this snakes team was doing exactly what i thought they were going to do for now they'll do two on two foots is going to block mid probably rotates back down bottom they could go aggro tri lane and have a farming up baden which is okay and then i think another blasted pugna against tusk is actually a pretty good matchup on the other side we have team archon mss getting a great ice shard block here Channeling his inner clockwork up on the Tusk mid lane, of course. We've got Chad zoning out the, uh, of course, the DK. He'll be on the Naga Siren, and that will be support. Korok playing the Queen of Pain mid. And then top lane, we've got Fogged, the Green Dream up with the Crystal Maiden, and Ush playing the Lena. And they're getting harassed down a little bit here as uh, as we speak. These ladies, one of ice, one of fire. Not, uh, not comfortable a bit, feels like, with this dual lane pressure, this Abaddon. We'll continue to get the A needed to just kind of do as he pleases with the CS. He uses the back end of the expiring shield to try to pop it right there and a little bit of extra poke damage for Ush. Ush, though, I'm sure, keeping his cool, calm, collect composure, going to be able to just snipe in as much CS as possible. So this will definitely be one of the lanes that we need to be looking out for here, along with bottom. Now that Chad, he's made a rotation here, WWD has got to feel the pressure. He's going to get back. Pugna is frail. That boy is damn fragile. He does not have an ounce of gain in him. 549 yeah. life early with four sticks or GG branches. Yeah, no, he, this is going to be... I think this is going to come down to the positioning of the Dazzle because at some point, MSS is going to put pressure on him with Chad Riptiding and maybe even to get an early point in Snare. Um, important to note, Chad also has a smoke, so if he wants to rotate mid... Dragonite is hard to bring down, but it is Korok, and he has the level 2 Shadow Strike, which is very good, and it chews through that Dragon Blood that Dr Champ Blue has, and he actually might go down here. They've got the blink on Korok. He could go for this. Will he, though, is the question. He's low in health. He won't want to. If he turns around and gets uh, Breathe Fired, he's done. There wasn't enough mana, though. That would have been very close coming out. But uh, you're absolutely right. Down bottom is going to be where the action is. I think everywhere there's going to be a lot of trading. The good thing for Archon is they have Fog, so you can head to the jungle and Frostbite if need be. They can kind of just leave Ush alone, which is okay, as long as MSS and Quark are getting farm. I think it really comes down to Archon getting these early rotations, though, and making something happen. Champlu, though, still getting bullied quite a bit in this mid lane. Lane's now has lane. to snipe from afar. But yeah, top lane is where we could see our first engagement. But they can move on to Ush. He connects with the LSA and is going to keep them back. Lundum tries to change target here, sees Fogs, who's going to continue to try to keep oh, them away from pressure. And then, uh, well, lane. yeah. Oh, Korok also rotating up to the top at this point, trying to catch him off. There's also help coming in. Dazzle shows up just in time. Futsum will be there. He has a Shallow Grave ready to go if necessary. Korok might have gone a bit too far. At the same moment, MSS is going to be the one to get the first blood, but the Snakes do retort and get one of their own. Bottom lane with the assistance from Chad. They're able to bring down little WWD.
very aggressive blink from Korok. It looked like they were backing up just as Korok was walking up, and he had to blink in. Without that blink available, he's not able to get out. And a great rotation coming out from the Dazzle. They get the damage out. They kill Korok, who is having a great time mid. And now they give Champloo a lot of room to work with here. But he's going to go in. Shadow Strike will go first. He's got enough for Scream. Last right click. Sick charge goes. Korok in trouble. Taking tower hits. He'll be okay, maybe. Last right click from the tower will not do the job. And they will get the heal up onto Champloo, almost down to the Shadow Strike, but he'll stay alive for now. Croc being very aggressive. I mean, we know him for being an aggressive player, but uh, for some reason, he's been going in really hard in some of these engagements, Dakota. Yeah, I mean, obviously that felt like he's like, um, I, I didn't get what I wanted done in top lane, obviously, and he sees the supple little treat of a very weak and wounded Dragonite. He feels like he could pull the trigger, and if this was any other Dragonite, that could have been the case, but he had the magic stick ready to go, and well, he is a Dragonite after all. Just even the one point in the Dragon's Blood is going to help him just regen up and move past that Shadow Strike, which has been committed two levels. But WWD again going to get caught off on the bottom. Chad eats one more big shot from the tower, but he is going to be A-OK -okay and now has the south. But it seems like MSS just had to sort out some hotkeys. He was able to fly forward and get the nether pick on the Pugna. I think Chad might have still been an invis from the rune he picked up earlier. I'm not sure. They were waiting to pick, uh, set that up for a while, and uh, they get the kill, and that's fine. Like, And the really good thing is this top lane, this dual lane, which is supposed to be aggressive against Ush, is not really getting much done in terms of shutting him down. Look at his CS, man. He's got 21 last hits. Sure, his denies aren't great, and he's not really stopping the Abaddon from farming, but he doesn't give a damn about that. Ush just wants to get his items, maybe get an early Yules, start roaming around, and get stuff done. And they'll probably try to coincide that with MSS's level 6 and him getting another item and then Korok hitting that, that level 6 point as well. So I, I really do expect some early rotations here, especially with how effective this Naga Siren is going to be um, in terms of pumping up the damage. And already WWD had to do that long walk of shame from the base to get back into lane. It's been a struggling start for him. He's 15 and 5 CS, but he, the more important thing is that he's been brought down two times. He does a magic wand. And a salve on hand now, but he's still very, very weak. And has to be cautious not to overstep his boundaries away from this tower. He does have foots in nearby now in that dazzle. But look at mid lane here. This is yeah, Chad. This is smoked up. He commits. He's moving forward. Waiting to pop up the ensnare. Oh, Shampoo has gone way in now for Korok. And he's going to be way out of position. They lead in with the ensnare. Shower strikes on. And Shampoo goes down. And that is going to be another pick there. Archon moves up 3-2. to two. Yeah, but they got the kill on Ush top lane, who looks like he was just a little out of position. Fog had rotated out. Looks like he was trying to maybe get some juggle CS and rotate mid to help get that kill. But uh, unfortunately, Ush goes down for it, which means they got some more room for the Abaddon to work with. So we talk about rotations from Archon, how important that's going to be. Can they fight early? Because the entire lineup of Snakes is planned around getting level 6 on Dragonite and maybe starting to ball up and push down a lane. The unfortunate thing is that's going to come a bit later as WWD is not getting the levels nor farm he would like. I guess 22 CS isn't. 23 CS is actually pretty good. But he has gone down twice already. Top lane. I should trouble Arctic Bird. Last right click. He bottles through it. Still alive. Fog. Can't catch up with that Crystal Nova. Hell, he goes the wrong direction. They try to head to the trees. They won't find him. And instead, Loomdom as well as QXKV will sit back, cold and brace, and just chill for a bit. Literally chill with the Golden Brace, but they yeah, do yeah, recognize yeah. when uh, yeah, Fog rotates away to the jungle. They might have saw it with this ward they placed very early and know when it's the time they can kind of be aggressive. But okay, doesn't stop speaking aggressive. They move on forward. And they get the catch onto Dazzle, taking advantage of really what Pugna can't offer as a defense. Now he's going to pop his own stick to Crep Blast. Not enough to burst him down, but Loomdom shows up on his Wyvern. Goes into Arctic Bird, but can't quite get the connection. Now they look to go for Chad. Splinter Bass not going to connect. After hitting the creeps there, and they're going to be getting away a committed rotation, and they lose their dazzle for this. Oh my god, that mirror image. It saved MSS's life. He Arctic burned the wrong target. It went on to an illusion instead of MSS. He would have been dead more than likely, and they couldn't connect. The splinter blast wasn't there because of it as well. And they get out scot-free. Now MSS rotating. He's got the snowball level 5. No walrus punch yet. Maybe he wants to leech that level 6 first, but there is going to be a rotating up Winter Wyvern. Shadow Strike goes through. They'll notice him. Arctic Burn's going to fly. MSS on the wrong side of the river. He does have double damage. He doesn't have Sigil, though. He's so slow. Now he's going to snowball. Wait for Quark. So oh! save on two. But there's the heal. Cold Embrace. They can't get the kill before they get the rotations in. That great Cold Embrace and Grave coming out the defensive combo. Quark trying to run out. He's got a lot of, he's got a bottle up and he will stay alive. He's blink up in two and one. The corrosive breath, it is of course fatal, but it can't quite tick down. And Quark will stay alive.
This loomed on lineup he threw together just already showcasing how goddamn defensive it is. And yeah. with that, they extend, they do push out a lot, and they can't get the rewards they were seeking. But I have to say one of the flaws for Team Snakes in their lineup is they don't really have a lot to stop Archon from just getting away. Not a lot of disables there. I mean, yeah, they yeah. got the stun lock from your Dragonite. Maybe a poison from Dazzle, which obviously hasn't committed. Wyvern can be a bit tricky as long as you're able, obviously, as Winter's Curse. But outside of that, nothing can be too reliable as far as the disables go. Bottom lane, though. Loom done. Arctic burning on the MSS. They look to return fire. Good cold embrace is going to save WWD. A split comes out from Chad. MSS looking to re-engage here. Splitter Blast. Chad doesn't like that. Looks to turn and run. And it looks like this is just going to be some serious flirting from both sides. But yet to commit. Oh, MSS still thinking about it here. Lumdun is trapped. He does have Cold Embrace once again now. Six charges for MSS if he wants to go in. Lumdun has, he has he's the got punch. enough mana for a Cold Embrace, but they know this is going to be Ice Charge. Ooh, good Cold Embrace. I think he was going to live anyways, but still. But while that was all happening, Dakota, they take down that tier one tower mid snakes. Get an aggressive play. Sure, they give Radiant up some farm for us. But we go back to that fight mid where Croc jumps in at Sonic Waves. The rotations were on point, and they have to be for this lineup. You have to be there. If you're in a bad and if you're Dazzle and you're in pub play, the key is always to have a TP scroll before that like, two-minute mark. And they've had them, and they've rotated so early, and they've rotated so often that they've saved a couple of lives here. Archon could honestly be up more than they are, but uh, there's been some really good play from Stakes. And now they have a lead because of that tower. Now, it's not really a lead. It's more Archon gold advantage, but still. They have the momentum advantage, I believe, coming through. Now we get ready past the nine-minute mark. The Snakes doing a bit better than EGX. Not going to lie on that front. And, uh, well, they're going to get their top tower denied. Take that away. Bottom lane, though, MSS spots out. Loom done. Cold Embrace at the same moment. He ends up punching a Glacier with this one. But here comes Chad. And Chad ensnares down Loom done. Loom done really had no more mana. He's going to be taken down. No rotations, no help. It doesn't feel it's too necessary. Archon are going to be pushing down this bottom lane in conjunction with mid. They will lose their top tier one. The first rotation to come out is Champloo, still in dragon form here, but doesn't have any backup yet. So Archon are just looking to trade. The rest of Snake still committing this top lane mod, but they are going to get down that tier one mid. I mean, but you saw how long it took to kill that Winter Wyvern with those two yeah. heroes. And, and that's just, that's the tip of the iceberg, no pun intended, but sure, why not? Uh, they have so much defensive capability that it's going if they're going to make you trade if they can. So good on Snakes for, for at least getting that two on top of Wild Wyvern, who is a low priority target for Snakes, goes down. Which, by the way, uh, their icon is is a Winter Wyvern, I think, on, on their their team icon or whatever it's called. I know uh, Lumdon was a big fan of the hero. Oh, jump in bottom lane, blink and you miss it. Korra commits everything he's got. The little Pugna will get annihilated. QXKV doesn't like what he saw, tries to bully himself forward for Korok here, but there is a party of three for Archon here. Now they pop the borrowed time. He still wants Korok. Now rotation comes in, Loom Dun returns. This Winter Wyvern goes into Arctic Burn here. Can he get anyone down? Looks like Fog is going to be the target. Futsa shows up, but that's just a dazzle. Doesn't even have the poison yet, and Chad says, everyone stop it! Pulls out the song, and it's going to allow for a safe getaway from Team Archon. Yeah, really smart play there. Good rotation coming out from Snakes. That should have been a dead fog, but the, the song of the Siren to reset the fight, back everybody up. And and it looks like the Abaddon is not going to be going for that, I wouldn't say hard carry, but at least some sort of carry Abaddon. He picks up the uh, Arcane Boots. Whether or not he picks up like a mech, eventually transitions. It's actually going to be WWD going for mech. He's the buckler. So Abaddon could go for like Glimmer Cape if he wants to go more utility. Vlad's, I mean, they've, they've got a lot of options here. It's just interesting he goes for the Arcanes. They know they need mana. Lumdun doesn't want to have to get it. MSS is going to get Arctic Burn, but he's fine. He's pretty tanky. They want this tower mod. Yeah, they, they, really they have all hands on deck here for the side of the snakes. They want to get this tower before they slither away. And look at the trades that Archon wants to do on the other side. Korok pushing all the way to the tier one, along with Ush, who's already poking at the tier two in the top lane here. So if they want to take this tier one, they better do it pretty damn fast or they're going to be losing a bit of their own. Korok even rotating over and helping Ush with this tier two. It's very apparent they're not looking to defend in a full team fight. Not quite yet. 
Chad made a huge play. He pulled the creep wave back. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so, but they're wasting a lot of time here if you are snakes. And now they have to get out, but it's going to take a while. They'll try to TP back to the tier 3 tower. There's no glyph. This tier 2 might fall. They'll TP into the tier 2 tower. Uh, still there. Still being aggressive. Last right click. Siege creep's going to come through. Deny. Not there. Ush picks up the last hit. That is a tier 2 tower for an offlane tier 1. Wyvern does get MSS in the offlane while that's happening. They might even get more. If they can get fog, that'll be absolutely worth it. The champ is getting kind of low. Splinter Blast not connecting. Still charging through Korok. There's the Shadow Strike. That is the bar time popping up. He'll try to TP away. It looks like he will make it. No, no Frostbite comes out at a perfect time for Fog. Giannis helps out getting the kill. And that, that was a lot of damage that did come out from that Nether War. But they do take down the Abaddon at the very least. And... That tier two tower is traded for for Archon. Ends up being the one for one. MSS goes down in exchange for their more core Abaddon. Yeah, they get that tier one bottom lane, but Archon were able to get that tier two on the top. So still a pretty damn good win here for Team Archon. So now they continue the muscle. Bottom tier one still standing for the side of Snake. So I'm sure it's a priority for Archon to kind of get to that. But if we look at the net worth here, Korok and Ush both at the top right now. Korok. Looks like he's going to be building up and going for a Necro build on your Queen of Pain. Wow, we don't get to see this one very often, but yeah, exactly. I guess it's the right time for it. Maybe just looking to burn off all that crazy mana to help with that defensive shell that Snakes have drafted together. Maybe doing their own assertive split push action because exactly. it's very apparent that the Snakes want to move as a five-man death ball. Yeah, Korok is going to try his best to split push with the Necro book. And the Necro 3 is going to be excellent for it. He'll clear out the creep wave quickly. He'll get to a Tier 2 tower or a Tier 3 tower perhaps. And I think this is the right choice. It'll take some time for him to get to the Necro 3, but when he's got it, it's going to be hard to fight into. They're going to smoke up. They will find out. Chad, does he have Song up? I don't think so. Dragon Tail is going to come through. He is in some trouble. Song, he did have it, but he couldn't get it off. Snowball will start the fight off for MSS. They'll jump in. Champloo has a haste rune plus a drum as well if needed. Brock does have Blink out in five. Ice Shard's going to block perfectly. MSS with the skill shots coming in. Let's see if they can continue to go here, Dakota. It looks like they're just going to back off on the side of uh, Archon. Yep, they're as five, so maybe they take this party elsewhere. It looks like potentially bombed towards this tier two. And, of course, Team Archon didn't even have their Ush player with them in this. He's been continuing to push out and find his own farm elsewhere. Looks like he's building toward his Agnum Scepter. Already has the point booster. Dyer's and near two extra components for that of the three. Korok, first book already on hand. He starts charging down this mid lane. They're just going to go right back into their Dyer's split push. Get up here and have the other three do their best to deal with this death ball and keep them distracted. MSS is first on the scene. We'll run your western side here. Just kind of tantalizing, playing with Futsa a bit. Attention though on this tier two. Here comes the rotation though. It's going to be Ush who shows up. Moves in. They get the stun onto a bat. And he does have the borrow time ready. Loom done. Waiting for the trigger. This ward has been doing serious work. MSS thinking about getting rid of it, but gets the crep of five. They're going to take down Fog. Now Chad. Yeah, he's going to dish out the song. It's a little too late to help out Fog, but now Scream flying on out. They get the two. Uppercut on the Wyvern. Going to get an immediate shallow grave. Shampoo, though, doesn't have anything to help him except his stick, which he will pop. Meanwhile, on the back inside, they're looking to finish off Chad. Chad on the run, pulling them the rest away. MSS so moves in. Beautiful catch right there with the ice shards to keep him back. Shampoo manages to weasel his way out of there, but Korok catches Lundun there in the end. It's a scramble for Snakes to get it out, but they can't. They get blasted apart, and they're going to lose two, three all day. Look at this chaos break out before us. Ush ends up going down, but it's Korok who does the janitor work, cleans up, and gets a triple kill for himself. It felt like Archon had to run like five miles for that fight. They had to do some serious lifting. They wiped the sweat off their brow. That fight took about a minute, it felt like. First of all, it took 30 seconds to get going. They probably should have song first, killed the Necro, uh, or rather the, yeah, the ward, the death, or whatever it's called, the, uh, the Nether Ward, excuse me. They needed to song and kill that first. They did that a little too late in the fight. I think they had already lost a hero and the tier two tower as they were doing that. But as the fight progressed, it was clear that Snakes were just out of everything. They had no mana. They had nothing to work with. The mech was already on cooldown. Dazzle had already expended his spells. Cole and Embrace wasn't there for a period of time. They just, they, they lost all of it, and Archon were ready to go. And then Korok comes in, has a great Sonic Wave, but it takes even longer to finish that fight off. Still really well played for Archon. They clearly are not really scared of this defensive style coming up from Snakes. They're going to have what I believe is a Bloodstone here for us very soon. Uh, it, as long as I can kill that nether ward, man, they should be okay to fight a lot of these engagements here. Yeah, you're right, the bloodstone. I guess I just kind of didn't even acknowledge the soul ring he already had, and he's going to look to complete it out. And, but here comes Snakes with their death ball, looking to charge down this mid lane, and attention on this tier two. 
the same moment you already see the split plays coming out. Korok working on this top lane. Fog rotating on in. Maybe going for the courier here. Saw on the way back. There it is. Can he catch it? Yo! Gets the one hit, but that's clearly not going to be enough to take down the Master Cluckles. So with that, Tier 2 is going to be dropped. Arcan can't defend it. And now they rotate elsewhere. Just going to look to keep this top lane pushed back. And then I'm sure Team Snakes would love to go for the top Tier 2 next. And this is something, this is just, it's such a tough lineup to overcome. This death ball style of push in, you know, defensive style of team fighting. But at some point, Archon are going to have to try to overcome this in one way, shape, or form. And I think Bloodstone's fine as long as he, he can get some kills with it soon after. Korok building Necro 3 is definitely the right choice in this situation. If they can make space top lane and mid lane, perhaps he can get head bottom. They'll have Necro 3, plus they'll also have Chad with the Medallion coming out very soon. They smoke up. Will they either go for a kill or will they head into Roast is the question. It looks like it'll be for the former. And MSS is going to walk under this Observer Ward here, so they have a pretty good understanding that he's in the enemy jungle. They don't know where everyone else is. They're clearly missing off the map. Mm. If you look at the vision on the side of the Radiant, it's fantastic. Everyone's missing. Let's stay under our Tier 2 tower. Yeah. Well, let's not go out They did see the rune disappear out of thin air. One of the smoke, I believe it was Fog, picked it up, and they were under vision. So if they notice the bounty rune just kind of disappear, they know something's up a bit, and it shows it in their body language. Just hiding under this tower, waiting a bit. They probably verbally made the call out. Shampoo will be tantalizing, you know, as he reaches out a bit on this bottom lane, but Team Archon, they're kind of getting the idea that, you know, snakes know that the jig is is happening right now. So they're going to step elsewhere. QXKV got the hood now. Going Looks for that like pipe. He's going for the pipe. The pipe hype. Yeah. Very good item, although Laguna Blade and hopefully Usher's next item and, of course, the, the Sonic Wave are, are going to... You know, at the same time, um, it's still a very good item. There's a lot of spam bubble nukes here from a lot of these and pretty, pretty much every single Archon player. So... The pipe is an amazing pickup, not to mention the Guardian Greaves. And we saw how long that last fight bottom was. Guardian Greaves reducing the cooldown back down to 45 seconds where it used to be for mech is an amazing choice for WWE. They're mid -lane moving in fight. mid lane. Snake's trying to catch out Ush from the side. They get him with the Dragon Tail, followed with the Winter's Chris gets MSS involved, starts smacking his own teammate, and Ush will go down. But he's able to get the suicide off just preemptively. Now MSS trying to stall things out. Snowball's going to be moving onto the Abad, who gets cold embraced. Fog shows up, and so does the song. Along with Korok. Now, Korok, is he going to be lining up the Sonic Wave? No, they're going to actually disengage. That's the right play. Ush would have not been at the fight quickly enough. Everyone was full health. They had nothing really left in the tank after that. They could have Sonic Wave, but it's still just a level 2 ultimate. I honestly think Snakes have a really good chance to just push high ground with it. As long as they have Elder Dragon form up and WD fighting fit. This is really hard to fight into if you're Archon. Bloodstone, I don't know if that was the right choice. Does get a nice I'll say blows oh. up that poor Pugna, but he does lose a lot of health. That That is a freaking tanky-ass ward, but it will go down. Great ice shards from MSS. Jump in! MS gets the big bars punch. QK. He does have that bar time. He'll use it. Grave is up on Champ Blue. Now they use the big, big ultimate from Fog. They're just slowing everybody. This is going to be a team wipe. Great hold from Archon. Korok with the triple kill. And they wipe him from the backside. And now they can even take down a tier two. Head to Roche. There's so many options. And Archon have taken control of this game with that fight. That was a beautiful flank setup from behind, which is something Snake should have seen coming, which they might have. They have these two wards from both sides of this mid lane, but maybe by then it was just too late. They committed so much. You can see the extra bit of utility from Korok in that Necro book is easily able to take out that Nether Ward. And because of it, they wipe out the team. Now they're moving into the Roche. They're going to battle it with the big boy here, and it's going to be an easy Aegis in the pocket of Korok. And now with this momentum swing, it looks like it's going to be their turn to start knocking down some Tier 2s. And you fear a bit for Team Snakes. Was that what they got? Was that what they were building up for this whole time in hopes of being able to take that fight, take a Tier 3, maybe the dream taking down Arax, but now that there's a little bit of rain on that parade, do they have to just muscle and keep at it while they can? Because if this game just tick, you know, keeps going forward, I don't think it's going to get any easier for them. No, it's not going to get easier, but I don't think they're... That was not like the end-all be-all timing because they... they
guaranteed. Of course, this fire result. So we might actually see a trade. They'll glyph up on the side of Archon. Their tower is at half health. And it looks like they won't be rotating back anytime soon. Archon are chewing through this tier 3. Glyph has to be used as well on the other side. It should be just a tier 3 for tier 3 trade. Who's going to TP back first is the question. And it looks like it will be Archon. Yep. They lose a the tier 3. Korok will hang back. UXKV gets stunned up. Laguna and borrow time though. He's going to be going off. And then he immediately shields himself thereafter. Chad goes down. Chad buys back. They want to look to try to get them out from this base. A setup from the song now. Bottom lane still getting wave. pushed as well. For the side of Archon. Now they move in. That ward just starts flashing all over the place as chaos breaks out. Archon able to quickly burst through the two. Shampoo going to get saved up and now retreats with the back end of the shallow grave. Korok diving on in. Finally, they step off and finish off that ward. They're able to quickly burst down Shampoo. He's going to get dropped. Korok commits on forward. They want Loom Done. Loom Done cannot escape. He's going to get uppercupped in his dragon ass and he will go down. Dazzle, their lone survivor, already back into the base. They have lost. They're ranged racks, and he's going to try his best to just pick up the pieces and keep this threat away. But look at Team Archon, all back and alive. It did cost them the one death. Actually, it looks like they took down Korok. Was it two buybacks actually expended there for this? There was an Aegis for Korok expended. Yes. Buyback was for Chad. And they're just going bottom. They want this melee racks. Necro is back up, and Futsa cannot deal with this. They'll respawn up, but they have no glyph. This melee racks is gone. So the team that has the death ball push is getting posted at 23 minutes into the game. That's a fantastic fight coming out from Archon without the Necro Warrior or the Necro Archer. That was so hard to take down that ward. You saw how much damage it did. It pretty much single-handedly brought down Korok and Ush pretty low. Broke Korok's Aegis. But the Sonic Wave, the Riptide coming through after the song, the Snowball, the Ice Shards, all of that AoE damage, the Dragon Slave, coming together, and it blows up everybody from Snakes. If they had the Nether Ward, or rather the, the Necro Book up to take down the Nether Ward, they would have gotten an even cleaner fight. Might not even lost the ages for Korok as well. Apparently our stream did go down. I really don't know why, but it is down. We're still live and well in Dota TV and recording for the VODs that people can catch when this concludes. Uh, frustrating nonetheless, but here we go. Smoke does move out from Team Snakes here. They're hoping to get a grasp of something, but it looks like nothing is going to be close enough for them. Chad, the closest one, already on his way out back towards the top. The rest of Archon back in their base awaiting for what they imagine is Snakes popping out from the darkness. Korok is working with the top lane, and yeah, Snakes not going to be able to get the catch on anyone here. All right, well, Korok has an Orchid. Uh, that came out of nowhere. That's pretty nice. So that's a pretty good item coming through. I it's just gonna actually it just I don't know if you really any target that he orchids is a great target. They all have defensive abilities. The DK obviously will just amplify the damage, won't allow him to dragging tail and roam freely throughout a fight, and he his a lot of his burst damage is coming through through, through the brief fire right now, so 20 to 10 is the score currently. Archon have a full set of racks advantage. And Fog even has a glimmer cape. But he's going to have to choose wisely when to use that. Him getting off a freezing field this game after using Glimmer Cape seems almost impossible. The mana cost of his ultimate is ridiculous. Yeah. So we'll see if he decides to just keep the Glimmer Cape and save it for somebody or just go for a full freezing field or if he has enough mana for both, which will be tough. For now, though, they're flirting pretty damn close. QXKV shields up. Looks like they're just going to mildly trade here. But look who's already pushing in. Korok is sending the high ground here from the northern side of the snake's base. Shampoo just Regeneration. trying his best to keep them back with the breathe fire. Chad continues the pressure on the bottom while the racks has already been taken down. So this kind of spreads Team Snakes pretty damn thin from both sides. Forcing everyone out of tension here. Not able to move out, not able to farm. Team Archon just using their best capabilities to just take control of the whole map. Hell, Ush is even back in his own jungle just farming up on his own. It's just kind of Team Archon what almost feels like at this point playing with their food before they do finally decide to eat it on up. But look at QXKV here. He decides he wants to charge forward for Fog. He's going to come with an uppercut, and now they're going to look to go on him. There's an Orchid as Korok does come in. Borrow time is going to have to be used. They look to move on to Korok, even committing the dragon form, but they don't get the stun. Champloo charges in. A nice little sidestep that forces, or MSS dishes out the ice shards that forces the sidestep, and now they look to catch Archon, but they're not going to get it. Oh, devastating right now for Team Snakes. A life drain Chad, he mirror imaged and ran at the WWE Pugna. They're 
trying to find Champ through a rare miss in the ice shards. MSS will Shadow Blade away nicely. They want to lure them out of the base, and they will do just that. Chad actually songs the TP's away. They could have got the team there. In fact, they will. The ward is up. Do they have the Necro books? They don't. Down for 15. Nether Strike's got to come through. Rather, uh, Shadow Strike. They'll try to right-click the Nether Ward from the, the high ground, and he should be able to grab it. They'll deny it. Who cares? Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, if Archon had lured them out of the base even further and took a fight, then... That's pretty good for them. They don't want to have to fight into the tier 3 in the high ground. There's just too much defensive capabilities from snakes. So that's that's pretty insane. Um, I I have turned down the stream on BTS2. So for those of you, if, if we have any other issues, you can head right over there if necessary. Meanwhile, there's a smoke wraparound coming out from Lumdun and Champlu and the rest of the squad. And Fogged will make it away, it looks like. Yeah, I, I did fire it back up, and hopefully it comes back, but it's nice. We'll have two different perspectives from each caster for this one game, so might as well just make it a fun feature, I guess, for now. MSS spots out WWD. He's going to snowball up, and then quickly blink away from trouble. Meanwhile, mid lane, Korok doing a split push thing. He's already in there with the good book, and he's just going to try his damnness to get as much damage on this Tier 3 as possible. Brings down a near health. Half health. Books are going to get rid of. But look at this. Look who cuts off each other. Korok gets the Orchid onto Champlu. It's zoned back from WWD, but it's still just Team Archon doing what they please here. Forcing Snake back into their base when Snake just want to find a way to move out and maybe get a pick off on Archon while they try to split push. It just does not seem to be easy at all. I mean, they already used one of their smokes, right, for, for Snakes. So they need to get out of the base somehow. They have to try to find a pick, as you mentioned. Otherwise, they're going to get Roche again coming out for us or whoever wants that Aegis. Probably Korok, actually. So... It's tough, honestly. Roche will spawn in two minutes. And all that Archon really need to do is spread the map until Roche respawns. And once that comes up and they take an Aegis, then they could probably get a bit more aggressive. Maybe wait for another item coming out for all their big big cores. And then try to push into the tier 3 tower, which is very low already. Well, it's halfway. Half health mid and very low top lane. Yeah. So there's a lot of options here for Archon. And this is... Uh, it's 15,000 net worth lead. This game is going to be pretty tough to throw, I think, if you're Archon with the, the type of lead they have. It feels like they just are waiting just to get that one extra item or two before they finally just commit here. Or maybe they just have respect for this defensive lineup that Snakes have thrown together. But if we really just break down like how good their high ground defense is, I don't know if it's the best ever. Uh, maybe just Archon really want to make sure they secure this one. It's their first game under the name, and whoa! QXKV just gets annihilated. No borrowed time for you. He just gets executed very easily there from Ush. Getting through that threshold, man. Mm -hmm. That's really good for it. When you have an Agate Scepter, what is it? Level 3 ult, 950 damage, easy. Not even a problem for Ush. He knows he can get, a, he can get away with it now. So that's, that's one defensive ability gone. Uh, I'm also having some trouble encoding, apparently. So yeah, I don't know a... what's wrong with the world. I am back in live. I assure you, people, I don't have potato internet. 200 down, 20 up should be more than plenty. New router, everything. I don't know I what's mean, up. I don't even know I, if this is something with the handshake I think, connection. I think it's Twitch. I, yeah, it must with, be Twitch. I don't know. There's no reason for me not to be yeah. encoded. And obviously, I didn't drop from the Dota game or anything. But oh, we'll keep action here. As, you know, if you miss any of it, I assure you, the VOD recording the whole time, you can catch it all on the Beyond the Summit YouTube channel. Right, anything I'm that might have been missed. I can't. I am literally not lagging anywhere else other than like when I'm <laughs> trying to stream. It's actually ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know. It's just technology, man. But here we go. WWD. He works with the top lane. The rest of his team scouting out mid. Do they have a smoke again? No, they don't. They have been waiting for this. I thought they were going to keep committing to the Dragon Knight BKB sooner. They stepped off for the uh, the same Janyasha. Now they're almost getting complete, but they still have a ways to go. It feels like it's just very timid play for them. Not nearly as comfortable on being able to go for the offensive. And all the meanwhile, Archon, they get their Roche and their Aegis. This might have been the ticket they've been waiting for to finally ascend the stairs and push it into the high ground. Yeah, this is, I think this is it. Uh, they're going to get ready to go. They are kind of, they're very close actually coming out. They're going to wrap in. There's the Witch's Curse on Ush. He doesn't have an Aegis. He's in trouble. Gets the Glimmer Cape from Fog. Sonic Wave blows up the Dazzle. Will they turn and fight this? They could use Song. Where's Chad? He's not there yet. Freezing Field from Fog. Champ Blue in trouble. Out of mana. Croc pops the BKB. Beautiful. Great Aphonic Shield. Nether Ward's there. Croc still going in. Song will catch. They got to bring down that ward. 
The creeps actually do the job. Oh, she's getting ready to go. LSA, champ blue, see you later. WWD, that BKB will not save you. And that has got to be it. The bar time will go, and it'll keep him alive for a moment longer. But there it is, Dakota. GG is called for much shenanigans in this first game. And Archon expectedly take a 1-0 advantage here against Snakes. Yeah, you know, it, it didn't come at quite the stop we saw from, like, Complex and EG, uh, EGX, that open qualifier team. But certainly, nonetheless, it's Team Archon who will come out on top. They break through the hard defensive shell of the Loom Dunn lineup. And it looks like they're just going to have to try their best to shake that one off and come into game number two. But it will be Team Archon with the match point advantage. And remember, it's a single elimination. They win this next game. They move on. And Team Snakes, the Frosted Snakes, do go home. And, well, Mott, any last thoughts on it? If you had to pick an MVP for this matchup, who would you say it is? Um, It's tough because it, it felt like a team, a team kind of win. I think Korok's play early on was a bit too... Um, he went in, I think, too hard too many times. And I, I, MSS had some clutch ice shards. Him and Chad had an excellent off lane. It's really hard for me to not give at least one of those guys the MVP for Archon. I, I think MSS, just because of how his ice shards worked, how he initiated the fights, but that's really just Tuscar play. I think uh, one of those two, man, I can't, I can't decide. I'll go with one of those two. And if you have a different opinion on who you think an MVP is, well, you do have a chance. If you go ahead and tweet at Squarespace, the Beyond the Summit America sponsor, a hashtag of BTS Americas with who you thought the MVP was and why, you do have a chance, of course, to win uh, a promotional code for a free one year on Squarespace. So with that said, we're going to wrap things up for game number one. I'll double check all everything on my end and see if we can keep stability for game number two of Snakes going against Team Archon. That will be coming up in just a few moments. Please sit tight.